Farm. I'm Karen Gould of Produce with a Purpose. What we normally do is teach classes in person for folks who are trying to boost their wellness to fight cancer and other things like heart disease and diabetes where your doctor told you you should definitely eat more produce. And then what, right? So we're trying to make it stupid easy, madly tasty and secretly healthy because uh, you have enough overwhelms, frankly. Um, but since we're in quarantine, we can't all get together around the table and share food and do those germy things that we love to do. Um, just because it's a vulnerable, pop vulnerable population and we don't want to take any chances with anybody's health. So this is our first um, recorded video, but in the future we're going to do them live. And you'll be able to chat and cook along with us and ask questions and um, and then see the problem I had with doing an online class was you couldn't taste the food. So that one, that seemed unappealing. So anyway, this way, if we all cook along together, you and your house, me and my house, then you can taste the food at the end. Anyway, today's lesson, we're talking about berries. Now you hear about them being good for you and having antioxidants and all that stuff, but there's a little more to it and it's all good news, nothing to worry about. Um, so I'm gonna give you just a little bit of information and then we're gonna break away and cook. And then we're gonna come back for the rest of the information because information means options and options mean hope, right? As long as you, there's another solution out there that you can try, there's something you can do, there's hope that things can get better, right? So I'm gonna try to give you all that empowerment that I can. Anyway, so to start off with berries, the beautiful, beautiful thing about berries is that they are little, they're like candy, right? They just melt in your mouth. They're all kinds of tasty and tart and, and delicious, but they're actually packed with really important nutrients, which gives us a perfectly good excuse to eat them whenever we feel like it. Not too much like, you know, tummy ache level, just, you know, a lot. The whole Bramble family is absolutely amazing and it's all over the entire Northern Hemisphere. Uh, it starts with proto blackberries and raspberries and then the family tree divides out like crazy into all these hybrids. I guess people like berries because they kept trying to make their own favorite one. So you can see this is a mad tangle here. So raspberries and black caps, who doesn't like those, right? They contain elagic acid, which has been clinically shown to cause cell death, killing off those cancer cells, right? Certain cancer cells, not every single one, um, but especially colon, esophageal, liver, lung, tongue, and skin cancers. And raspberries and black caps, the raspberries themselves contain so black caps are actually black raspberries, right? And the, re the way you can tell the difference between them and a blackberry is when you take them off the stem on the blackberry, you still have a core and on raspberries and black raspberries, you don't, you have a little cup inside, right? Anyway, very trivia. Red raspberries have a ton of antioxidants such as vitamin C, quercetin, gallic acid, they all fight cancer. They're good for heart and circulatory diseases and age-related decline, according to the University of Oregon. Whole berries, it turns out, are more beneficial than taking the individual phytochemicals in the form of pills, dietary supplements. So this is great, more dessert for you. Black raspberries are truly superfoods. They have astonishingly high antioxidant levels. If they grew at my house, I would have rows and rows and rows of black caps, but they don't. Um, they have this thing called anthocyanins, which give foods like black raspberries their deep dark color. And they've been shown to have anti-inflammatory and vasoprotective properties. Research has linked anthocyanins with improved vision, cardiovascular health, memory retention in old age and reduced risk of hypertension. Lots of things that I would just like to avoid in general, so I will be eating lots of berries. Um, anthocyanins are 
um, phytonutrients that are attached to that dark purple uh, pigment. So pretty much wherever you see in the fruit and vegetable world that dark purple color, those anthocyanins are in there. So everything purple is glorious. Okay, my very favorite, and then we'll jump on to cooking. Um, my favorite is Olali berries. The first time I tasted them, it was like a blast. Back to my childhood in the woods in the Adirondacks picking blackberries, and then my grandfather in the kitchen making jelly, you know, and his like white t-shirt, and it's all hot in there and steamy. And then my sister and I, before he finally made the jelly, would get to drink the juice. So okay, so it's the kind of berry that gives you all the feels. Right? It's really got that wild berry taste. But it was developed by the US Department of Agriculture in Oregon, commercially available since 1950. And although it's supposed to be cultivated in Oregon and Washington, it actually grows better in California from the coast all the way over to the foothills, including my farm, which I'm very excited about. Can you tell? So the Olali berry is a hybrid of Logan berry, which is a raspberry blackberry cross, and the young berry, which is a variety of blackberry, hence that whole crazy family tree before. The name came from the Chinook people and it means berry. So once again, uh, settlers have named something twice, right? Like it's berry berry. Anyway. They're longer, they're plumper, they're less seedy than blackberries, and they've got that wild berry flavor, but they have a very short season, which is ending about now. So you gotta get to your fruit stand and see if they have any before they go and grab them all up and freeze them, whatever you need to do, because they are far and away the best. All right, I wanna take a minute and scoot on over here to cook. We are going to make very fresh almond thumbprint cookies. Now, normally thumbprint cookies, they're very kind of white flour and jelly. So a whole lot of refined carbohydrates that I'm not really that excited about. So the way we're gonna do it here, we're gonna get, um, we're gonna use almond flour and we're going to use coconut sugar and then we're gonna use a fresh berry so I'm going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees and grab an egg. And while I'm doing that, because I didn't want it to be warm. So now you know, even though I'm on a video thing, I'm actually wearing pants. I don't know if you can say the same, but let's just imagine. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cream together the egg, the sugar, and the, and the, in this case, I'm gonna use almond butter. So one egg, and this goes over here. And then a third of a cup of coconut sugar. Coconut sugar, by the way, is not like cane sugar. It's actually closer to um, something like maple syrup or maple sugar in the sense that it comes from the sap of a tree and it's much less refined than uh, pure white sugar. So we're not crazy about that stuff. And then we're going to use a couple of tablespoons of almond butter this time. And I'm using this one because it's too crunchy and nobody in my house really likes it. They like the creamy one. So we'll just use a couple of these teaspoon, tablespoons of that. So what I've been learning actually about this is uh, almond flour is better for some folks and peanut butter because if you're talking about Chinese medicine, it's more, um, it's, it's less damp, the kind of fat that it is. So I know maybe in your cookies, that, that's not your, your top priority, but hey. So we're gonna get this started right here. And we're gonna get our dry ingredients, the other dry ingredients, our 
almond flour right here. Doesn't have to be fancy. Okay. Do this. And we're going to put in two cups of almond flour. A little bit out of view here, but hang on. All right, here's our almond flour, two cups. I'm going to put my salt right in here. And if you wanted to add in some spice at this point, you could add a little ginger in here. It wouldn't hurt anything. Okay, so we're just going to mix this right in. Let's get that all together so it's nice and doughy. And let's see, I almost forgot this little guy. I'm gonna put in some almond extract. If I can get it open, I will. Here we go. Not like it's not almondy enough, but just for a little splash. Okay. Just gonna get this all together nice and doughy. That yeah, almond butter might be a little on the dry side compared to something like uh, a vegan butter. So I'm just going to put a little, little elbow grease in it. Okay, now we're nice and cookie doughy. And this is actually, the recipe makes a small batch because, because that's the way I learned it and that's why that's why I adapted it. But... There is a slight advantage in that I would rather um, eat these hot, actually not hot, hot, but warm. Um, when the berry's still really kind of gooey, it's just, uh, it's just kind of delightful. Okay, so there's my basic dough. I'm gonna use some parchment. Now, when you look at parchment um, for baking, A lot of them have sort of no stick sprays on them. And I have to say, a no stick spray is not really uh, great for your health, let's just say. I don't think it adds anything. Teflon and Teflon pans are definitely not good for you. So if there's a sort of Teflon spray involved, I think I would avoid that product. Speaking for myself, don't want to be sued. Okay, so then we're just going to make a little ball. I'm going to plop it down there. And we're just going to make this power size we want, you know? It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be specifically... You may have noticed I'm sort of casual about this, and you can be too. I'm a lazy cook, to be honest. I don't want things too foo-foo. I don't want things too complicated. I don't want to go shopping at a, you know, at a, at a faraway store just for one product. I like to keep things simple. So these are really easy. And honestly, the kids could help you with these, no problem. I'm making irregular sizes now. I shouldn't. Actually, those two small ones are a little too small, I think. Hmm. Or the big ones are too big. Either way. Okay. So we're just gonna... Let's see, that's a little much. Just a nice size, just for a little bite. You just want it big enough so we'll be able to put the berry in there and have it sit properly. And actually, you know, you can use almost any kind of berry that you might like. Um, I've tried it with a couple of, they have to be big and juicy though. I've tried it with blueberries, it worked okay, but smaller blueberries kind of dried out. So you need something big and juicy. You could even experiment if you like with other kinds of um, fruit. I was thinking maybe, um, Maybe a slice of peach or nectarine could be a good thing too. But you play with it. You know, at the end of classes, people all, you know, always ask me like, 
could I change this one little thing? It's like, when you leave here, it's yours. It's healthy now. I mean, don't like, you know, stick a bunch of sausage in there or something, but, but you know, if it's going to stay basically healthy, there is no downside at all to making it something that you really like because, you know, no matter how healthy something might be, if you don't actually enjoy it, you'll do it one time, you'll take a hit for the team, you know, you'll take that hit, I'm like, oh, right, then I've done it. I did my healthy thing. I'm over it. You know, I don't need any more of that nonsense. Who wants that, right? I ate my kale. I'm finished. Well, I think you want to do this one more than once. Because really, you know, if it doesn't make you happy and you're stressing all the time about having perfectly, absolutely, spotlessly uh, nutritious food and it combines the everything but you hate it, this is not going to help you. You know, I used to live in a town in Mexico and they, the, the clinic had, uh, you know, vitamins for the kids, but the kids would spit them out on the floor. And so oddly enough, they weren't getting healthier. Same thing. Okay, so now we're going to just put our berries right in there. Make sure they stick. All right, we've got a little one here, we've got a little one there. Got a little one right there. You can put two on there, go ahead. You know, knock yourself out. Make it juicy, make it tasty. But like I say, if it doesn't bring you joy, you know, Marie Kondo it, you know, just don't bother. You really should be enjoying healthy food. And the funny thing is that after a while, after you've been more used to, you know, uh, less white sugar in your desserts and whatnot, after a while, you just don't crave it. Your taste buds change. You know, they start pointing you in the right direction instead of leading you to a bag of Cheetos and betraying you. So um, we're just going to get these all going right like this. Boom. And by the way, these are my very last berries of the year. So there we are. They're all ready to go into the oven. So roughly 20 minutes, and then there we are, good to go. So that'll be up in a tiny bit. Meanwhile, let's go back and talk berries some more. So your blueberries and huckleberries, um, aside from just tasting magically fabulous, they are great for your bone health. They have iron, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, manganese, zinc, and vitamin K so much tastier than your multivitamin, yes? Okay, they may also lower your blood pressure, which is great. They are lovely for diabetes. Three servings a week can help you manage your blood sugar. For heart health, they have vitamin B6 and folate, and of course, all the Bs are good for your entire nervous system. They may reduce the risk of cognitive decline and improve a person's short-term memory and motor coordination. This has a lot of benefit for little tiny blue things, isn't it? Blueberries and huckleberries may also ward off esophageal, lung, mouth, pharynx, endometrial, pancreatic, prostate, and colon cancers, according to Medical News Today. They may help reduce your risk of cataracts and glaucoma. Um, that's why my aunt was taking them, just for eye health. Um, she made sure, even if she just had a bag of frozen blueberries in the fridge, she just Take a handful every day. Good for heart disease, or for fixing heart disease, cancer, and other conditions. Now here's the thing, huckleberries, they really don't grow around the Sacramento area. We're much too dry here. Um, but out towards the coast, if you head out towards Fort Bragg, you'll find a lot of huckleberries. They have less sugar, and they're smaller, and their taste is stronger because they're generally not domesticated. So you gotta find somebody who knows where there's a good patch to go picking. Mulberries are very fabulous. Um, they are not native to California, but they grow like crazy. 
Um, they are wonderful for digestive health because they, they have a whole load of fiber. They promote regular bowel movements and they lower your risk of stomach diseases. For blood circulation, the high iron is great. It boosts the production of red blood cells, which improves the distribution of oxygen to all the cells in your body, which is kind of important. Oxygen, you know. Um, blood vessel health. Mulberries can also help keep your blood vessels healthy thanks to its resveratrol content. And when we talk about blood vessel health, the idea is that they're um, flexible enough to expand, relax, tighten, as they're supposed to, as opposed to hardening and um, not being responsive to other things going on in your body. Mulberries are also great for blood sugar control because it has this weird antioxidant called DNJ. And you can read that there because I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it. Deoxy, no, never mind. DNJ, which inhibited, inhibits an enzyme in your gut that breaks down carbohydrates into sugar. So guess where they go when they don't get broken down? Boop. So that's lowering the amount of sugar that actually gets into your system, into your blood, your liver, and your pancreas, and all that. So it's beneficial for diabetics who want to control their condition. Liver health, according to one study, mulberry can help prevent the buildup of fatty deposits around your liver which can lower your risk of hepatic diseases not the fatty deposits right the the preventing um and that is uh yeah it's one of your major filters so when your liver is clogged up you know it's like any other plumbing you, you want things to be filtered properly Elderberries are, well, one variety is a California native, which means they're everywhere and they're fabulous and they feed the birds and then there's still enough for you to make jam and cough syrup and all the things you want to make. Um, it's used for conjunctivitis, cold and flu symptoms, especially flu, reducing congestion, relieving arthritis pain, soothing upset stomachs and relieving gas and for detoxification. I think only recently um, the medical field has recognized that elderberries are actually as good for the flu as any medicine that you will find on the shelf at the drugstore. In one placebo-controlled double-blind study conducted by Israeli virologist Madeline, Dr. Madeline, 93% of people taking the elderberry preparation had significant improvement in flu symptoms within in flu symptoms within two days of starting it compared to six days for the placebo group. So double blind studies. It's not just folklore, it's phytochemicals are actually chemicals, right? They actually interact with your body in a chemical way. So so yeah, elderberries, indigenous people have known this for couple thousand years and finally medicine has caught up and confirmed that yes elderberry, elderberry will be a big benefit if you take it to combat the flu. The next kind of berries we're looking at is wonderberries. They're related to tomatillos and cave gooseberries so they're actually in the nightshade family not brambles or any of those. Um, but wonderberries contain something called withanolides, which are antimicrobial, anti-tumor, anti-inflammatory, immunomodulatory agents. Got that big word, right? Um, the typical withanolide has been shown to suppress the growth of many types of tumor cells through apoptosis in cancers such as breast, pancreatic, prostate, lung, leukemia, and head and neck squamous cell carcinomas which is great news. Um, Wonderberries were developed by, um, by Luther Burbank of the California Burbank that you've heard of, um, who spent a lot of time hybridizing different varieties of things. And he came up with the Wonderberries, but by the time it was patented, somebody else called it a Sunberry or something, and they kind of stole the patent and he was really bummed. The thing is, these are loaded. Of course, you can see how you know dark they are. Um, 
they're definitely loaded with anthocyanins too. So they have a huge, huge impact. They're funny tasting when they're raw because they're somewhere between tomatoes and berries. And um, you really have to cook them down. But once you do, they're, it's like somebody mashed up blackberries and blueberries together, kind of best of both worlds. So you can make yourself a jam or a syrup or anything like that. Um, and they grow like weeds. So very much like tomatillos, if you had them once, they will receive themselves a thousand times because your little birdie friends will help. Uh, goji berries are super popular. Uh, I don't find them to have any taste at all. They're just kind of weird when they're, when they're raw and they're, I guess, a little better when they're dry, but they're really, really packed with nutrition. So if you can throw them in your, in your smoothie or, you know, across your cereal or something like that, it's all good. They're also in the nightshade family. They're cheaper in Asian markets under the name Lyceum or Lyceum. I don't know how they say it, um, but it's in any, in any case, maybe worth going because they're overpriced when they're sold in fancy fufu markets. They're reported to heal tuberculosis, insomnia, eye problems, skin rashes. They can help with managing weight and your blood sugar, and they may boost men's testosterone if you have any interest in that. Um, and they've been tested on cancer cells and found that they induced apoptosis on the cancer cells. So definitely worth throwing in there, even if they don't have a whole lot of flavor. Another one that's been all the rage lately is acai berries. Um, they are the highest in antioxidants. They boost your immune function, of course, and your white blood cells. And one study saw a reduction in pain from arthritis uh, with acai berries. Uh, it helps with blood sugar management as well. It has beneficial fatty acids such as oleic acid and oil found in olive oil as well. So normally I don't expect my olives and my berries to have a whole lot in common, but I guess they do. Um, that may be that, that, that faint back taste that I've been noticing. It's kind of an odd tropical taste. Anyway, they may help with arthritis, inflammation, obesity, erectile dysfunction, neurological diseases, allergies, and ailments associated with oxidative stress, heart disease, and cancer. So they, it's in lots of drinks and all kinds of interesting things. Um, but I, what I don't know is how, um, how sustainably it's farmed. I think they mostly come from the Amazon area. So not sure. Currants are lovely. My grandfather also made jelly out of currants. Um, but that's back in the day when everybody made jelly that was, I don't know, like eight cups of juice and eight cups of sugar added, right? And just to make it stand up. Um, it was a bit much sugar-wise, but it was delicious. And you know, he grew them back behind the apartments where they lived. And um, anyway, so I have good memories. It turns out in California, we have a native current. Um, but the black ones have, again, those lovely anthocyanins. Um, currants have 300% of the vitamin C that you need per day and lots of additional vitamins. They may play a part in preventing Alzheimer's. They may help with arthritis, gout, liver problems. They may ease problems with menopause, painful periods, and PMS. Mm, that ship has sailed. And against diarrhea, that may be a help as well. It's even used topically for healing wounds and treating insect bites. It really makes great jelly. Currants have inhibitory effects against pathogens associated with oral, nasal, and upper respiratory infectious diseases. Who should throw those together with some elderberries to make like a really great cold and flu something? Getting ideas. Anyway, the thing about currants in California um, was that they were actually transporting uh, funky fungus that was damaging grape crops and you know grapes are supreme so uh, we weren't allowed to grow currants here for a very long time 
I think it's passed and you can't do much about the wild ones anyway. So uh, if you get native ones, um, they should be very well acclimated and they grow on a little vine like mini grapes and they're, and they're just lovely and not, not terribly complicated. So in summary, many food conscious doctors are now recommending that you have some kind of berries pretty much every day. The good news is that the variety is practically endless. And almost every season you can either have um, what's super fresh right from the farmer's market, or you can tuck, tuck them away, get them when they're cheap and abundant and tuck them away in your freezer and throw them in your smoothie later. There are lots of ways to prepare them. You could dry them in a dehydrator, of course. You can put them in your smoothies. You can make a compote, which basically means that you just cook them down with just a teeny bit of water so they don't stick, right? Until they're just mostly juice and fruit. And um, if you need to sweeten it, just a tiny bit of uh, maple syrup would probably do the trick. Um, and then you can just put it on top of almost everything. There's actually a, uh, a vegan cheesecake that when I'm having people over and I need to cheat a little bit on making a special dessert, I will just make a fresh fruit compote of whatever berries I have and put it over the ready-made cheesecake, don't tell. Um, and it's amazing. It's really, you know, the, the freshness just jumps right out at you. You can definitely make sugar-free jam. I recommend, um, there's a product called Pomona Pectin that combines the pectin and uh, calcium. So that sets up your jam without being dependent on the sugar for structure, right? Normally, you, you know, you'd be giving you that body, but you don't uh, necessarily need that when the pectin and the calcium do the gelling for you. So in fact, I don't put any sugar in my jam. I'll either put a little bit of honey in or maple syrup, um, and that's it, just to you know take that tart edge off that not everybody loves. Um, you can also uh, use berries in tea. You can freeze them and use them in ice cubes in a drink, ice cubes that won't melt and water your drink. Uh, you can toss them in salads. For example, I have a lovely spinach salad with strawberries, just thinly, thinly sliced onion and um, sweet and spicy pecans, and then just the honey mustard dressing. Very simple, but very visual, and everything, those flavors just click together. Of course, you can make pies and pastries, and well, raw right off the plant. That's the very best way. So I recommend you pick farms or farm stands that are your neighbors, so you can be helping the local economy. But um, I think as long as we're social distancing, um, you pick farms may be available. Farm stands are definitely considered essential businesses, thank goodness, and farmers markets, of course. But um, the you pick farm, you get a um, you get a lower rate because you're doing the labor. So then it's worth it to stock up and get a whole bunch and go ahead and freeze it and can it and do all the things you want to do. To find a you pick farm near you or a farm stand, go to localharvest.org. They have everything. CSAs, farmers markets, farm stands, you pick farms, they know it all. You just put in your zip code and they will find them all for you. And that is just the most direct action you could take to get those beautiful, beautiful berries. So I hope this knowledge um, supports you, right? And helps you to make some, some good choices and delicious, delicious meals for yourself. Um, and keep them stupid easy, madly tasty, secretly healthy as we do. When you go to our website, producewithapurpose.net, you can also jump from there to our um, farm fresh resource pantry online. That's what I'm calling it. I don't even know what to call it. There's tons of information in there, but most importantly, recipes. Um, so tons of recipes in there and plenty of them have berries in them for sure. 
Uh, and they are all stupid easy, madly tasty, and secretly healthy. Because even though your doctor recommends these things, they clearly are not going shopping with you. And they're not in the kitchen cooking and eating with you. So you're kind of on your own, but you can go to producewithapurpose.net for some support. Um, if you would very kindly like to join us for the next time we do this, which will be live, so you can cook right along with us and taste the food at the end and use the chat to ask questions and make comments. If you would like to do that, please email us. And of course, the information is on the website. You can definitely find it there. But you can also email directly to me, produce with a purpose, CEO at gmail.com. And just let me know that you would like to be invited to the next one. And I'll send out a little newsletter. And on that newsletter, we will have. Um, a link to the event, which will have the ingredients, of course, and the gear that you need to cook with, right? And then the link to the program. And so we'll give you a week to go out and get your stuff and get yourself all together. And you don't have to cook with us, but it'll taste much better at the end. And you won't be just, you know, drooling and hungry and silly. Um, so sign up for the next cook along and we hope we will see you then. I'm gonna check my cookies right now. Two seconds. I need to get this. Aha. All right. Well, they're just about done. I'll grab one more. So you can see that the cookies are just starting to get a little brown. You want to get them golden brown around the edges. I may pop this in for another two or three minutes. You want them golden brown around the edges and you want to see that fruit starting to be nice and cooked like it is there. And like I said, I really recommend that you enjoy these warm because it's like eating a little tiny pie. How about that? Would that be good? Alrighty. So definitely sign up, get in touch with us, um, visit the website, and hopefully we will see you next time. Stay well and stay safe. And